You Tim, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this. We've got a plane. We're going to fly it. It doesn't even matter what plane it is, but this happens to be the slow ultra stick. We set it up with flap rons and we have some other kids with us. These are our oldest and youngest and our girls are not really flying yet, but the boys sort of are. And we want to talk about a very important aspect of the hobby. And that is flying with a buddy box or flying with a trainer. It's a feature we've never talked about because we've never really used it. And camera crew and I have been working on it and we're ready to share some stuff because it's very helpful. And we're gonna show you a couple of superstars flying. So that's really exciting. First things first, let's get this ultra stick down on the ground and talk about control surfaces. All right, first things first, when you have your transmitter, safety first, throttle cut, set it up, watch our unbox build radio setup part on any plane we do, and we'll show you how to do it. Now, if you ever wanna set up a buddy box, all you have to do is basically follow our instructions we'll do after this flight. You have an instructor and you have a student. The student is only allowed to fly when you're pressing and holding the I button if it's configured with the I button. You can also configure all the other buttons and you can have a master override where as soon as you move one of the primary control surfaces, they lose control and it audibly tells you that, okay? So for that reason, we're gonna hit back. We're gonna turn up our volume higher than normal. That way it's calling out loud. Also over here, hold this please. I'm gonna click, hit back, back, and turn it up. That way we hear. Normally that would be a distraction we want to avoid for a video, but because we have a lesser experienced pilot, we're gonna make sure that it's loud, okay? Now this is our older, older son, Andrew, and then our younger one, Caleb, is gonna fly in a minute. He's super excited to fly but he's nervous to fly on video, I think. So we're gonna very much limit how much he does. We don't historically put our children on our videos very often, just because they already live the life behind the scenes. Camera crew is also gonna fly this very plane, and we're gonna switch out a couple of quick flights, and we're gonna do a short sorties in this beautiful sunset with a calm day. Calm, sunset, sun up, good times to fly generally. You almost always get some calm. If it's calm in the middle of the day, that's fine. Just remember the more sun you have to worry about, you have to have something to protect your eyes. Camera crew is wearing sunglasses, I'm not, because the sun is in a perfect spot and it should lose its intensity over the crest of the hill there, okay? Hats, glasses, throttle cut, make sure everything's set up right. Here's the first pre-trip inspection we're gonna do. As the instructor, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right, roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps, I have some additional features for that. You can have additional features that don't ever get called out by the student, by the way. Caleb, you can stand by camera crew. And then Andrew, come around here. I'm gonna have you stand with me right here. Yep. And I want you to go through your control surface test. First of all, I'm gonna give you control. My throttle cut will override your throttle. I'm gonna shut it off, okay? okay? Now your throttle cut is live. I'm pressing this. Control. Okay. Listen. Student has control. Student has control. Now do your pre-flight. Elevator up, elevator down. Yaw left, yaw right. Roll left, roll right. Turn your safe on and off. It's with the gear switch. AS3X mode. Safe mode. Okay. And then test your throttle. The throttle cut is currently on. Mm -hmm. Good. It's working. Okay. First of all, clear your timer. I'm going to clear mine. All right, so our timers are set to five minutes. That's plenty of time. We're not gonna fly that whole flight, but we should be good. Now, keep in mind, we have set up the exact same model in his memory as in mine. But then when you call out the instructions that we'll show, we're gonna set up the T-28, another great beginner plane. This is not so much a great beginner plane. It just happens to be the plane we were using when we started this process. But I'm gonna show you just how quick and easy it is to copy a model into here and all you have to do is copy the basic controls. You do not need everything, but we have copied over the entire model in this case. So, flaps. Takeoff flaps. Landing flaps. And we've set up audible alarms for all of these activities so that you can hear what's happening. Now, if at any time I'm like, nope, you need to shut off those flaps, then I can either let go of my button and then it goes to my flight configuration. So you have to be as flying an instructor would. You're gonna always fly with the condition 
that you want it to be when you switch over. So lots of considerations, put it to regular flaps. You're in safe, I'll be in safe to start. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it out of safe, throttle cuts on. Okay, we're gonna get hooked up. Use lanyards if you plan to use lanyards. Don't use lanyards if you plan to pass controls as a precautionary measure. Because we are buddy boxed wirelessly, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get around where we wanna stand. Very important step here, guys. When you're training, get your feet set, know where you are, and be safe. Give yourself an out if you're flying in a big area. We've got lots of places to stand. Don't get yourself trapped up against the gate. If you're training in a field with a gate, give yourself room to jump this way or that. And I'm not joking though, it does sound funny. It's a good way to not get hit in the face as an instructor or as a student, okay? That's why they put the gates so that you have a little a protection you can duck behind it, okay? Flying these things is a generally safe sport. You'll be safe if you're careful. All right, so let's step back so we can go ahead and taxi out. Now also, we have thrust reverse set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and as the instructor, demonstrate it to my instructee, the student. Okay, so throttle cuts off. I'm controlling, I'm in thrust reverse. Now I'm gonna test forward thrust. Okay, see how that works? Very easy, you just pull this towards yourself and then the thrust is backward, all right. Okay. Now, Andrew has some skills and some practice, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him a chance to practice that. I want you to taxi forward. Have control. Cut off. Just a little bit. Okay, now stop. Give me some reverse thrust. Okay, go ahead. Stop. Now put it back to forward thrust. Just so you know, you don't need to give as much thrust as you did there. Generally, the props are not going to be as symmetrical, okay? I'm gonna take off and land. I'm gonna do a quick test and then I'm gonna let you take off and land for one circuit, okay? Okay. All right. So I have control, take off flaps. You're gonna taxi out, get the wheel up, take off, full landing flaps, slow it way down, get a feel for the flap runs. They do slow the roll rate down. You have to use a lot more rudder to fly. Okay, now generally when you're training, you don't wanna fly behind you as a pilot. We break that rule all the time on this channel because it is our facility, we control it. If you're at a field, you can probably only fly in front of yourself. Okay, now take off flaps only. And then I'm gonna land. Since it's so dead calm, we can land the opposite direction, but I'm gonna, for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and take it around as though the wind is at the same place from our takeoff. There is no wind. Okay, full landing flaps. Give it into your runway. And there it is. You can thrust reverse if you want for practice and then get it right back into forward. And as soon as you're done, call out throttle cut so everybody knows you're safe. Nice throttle cut will override yours. All right, do you have any questions, student? Nope. All right, ready, Andrew? Yep. All right, I'm gonna have you take off. My flaps are in normal. Oh, by the way, you can also set what axis of control you want your student to have. It can be just pitch, roll, and yaw, and throttle. You can even control that if you want but I would suggest that you give them as much control as possible so they can start to learn the switches because it's a big factor. Turning safe on and off is a big deal. I am an AS3X, he can have it in safe when he takes off, but as soon as it comes back to me, I want it to be in safe to help buy us some time. However, if I'm avoiding a tree, I may not wanna be in safe. So keep that in mind as an instructor. All right guys, throttle cuts off, go ahead and fly. All right, pull up. Slow down, first of all. Get your takeoff flaps on. Now do some landing flaps and control the plane. Good job. Now kind of do a little figure eight. Go over the bowl. Good job. Okay, so I feel nervous because you were going the wrong way. I took over and all I had to do was basically Flip the switch. Now I'm gonna let you take back over. You good? Yep. Okay, there you go. Uh, I don't have it. Okay. So you notice what just happened there, guys? I had a stick movement that kept control and it was a call out on the menu. Okay, full landing flaps deployed. I'm going in a level flight attitude. I'm in safe. I'm giving you control now. Yep. And I do have it. Sorry, I had to clear my timer. 
There you go. So just land from there if you wanna take a couple of circles down. The important part is all I have to do is hold the button, okay? The student is in control until they're not. If I slip off of the I button, then safe will have me. Don't hit the cherry tree. There you go, good job, line it up. Take off flaps will give you more roll authority. Take off flaps. Good job. Okay, now stop. Just, there you go. Okay, so throttle cuts on. I want you guys to see what happened at the end there. He came in and made a little bit of a turn and was pointed toward us as an instructor. I could tell that he was gonna have a trajectory similar to where I was gonna be standing. So I just moved. It's not a big deal. Don't be afraid to move. There's nothing he did wrong. It's just part of learning, okay? You have to protect yourself so that you can be out of the way and be safe and help protect your student, okay? Always think ahead of their mistake. As an instructor, it's a lot more complicated than you might think because you have to be prepared to take over the controls from where they are. Okay, I have my flap set. I have my safe on. I'm gonna turn that off. And I have my throttle cut on. So it's time to switch to a different pilot. Okay, go ahead and pull that lanyard. Make sure your throttle cut's on actually. It Thank you. Good, make sure you're in safe. Flaps are off. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch things up. Do you want me to let you do just one little flight down the line? Okay, so I'm gonna put this around your neck. This is called lanyard, bud. Okay, this is Caleb, he's our younger one. He's not as skilled. I'm gonna clear the timer. Now he's got control, but he's not gonna fly yet, okay? So what we're gonna do is, Andrew, why don't you get uh, with the camera crew? All right, buddy, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get this behind your neck so you're comfortable. Always get your pilot comfortable and make sure that they understand what they're gonna be doing, okay? Let's practice your thumbs on the sticks. So thumbs on the sticks. Okay, good job. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you control and you're just gonna go in a straight line for a little bit, okay? <laughs> Caleb can actually fly pretty good on the simulator and it usually only crashes into the building or the wall 95% of the time. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna shut off your throttle cut because you don't know what that is yet. Okay, get your, get your thumbs on the sticks. Okay, now you're not in control. I'm gonna back out the plane. You don't have to worry about doing that, but I'm gonna help you get ready to take off and I'm gonna take off, all right? So your transmitter is already set to safe mode, bud. So it's gonna auto level the plane, okay? I'm gonna set one click of flaps. I have the same setting. You don't need to worry at all about what I'm doing. All you have to do is fly like you know how to do. So I'm gonna take off, you can stay right where you're standing, okay? And then I'll tell you when I'm about to give you control and I'll just have you fly in a straight line, okay, buddy? That'll help build your confidence. All right, so pretend like you're in control by moving your sticks and see what happens. Go ahead, like you're gonna take off, give it some throttle. See, nothing happens, okay? Keep it there for now. And as I fly, you can pretend, okay? All right, here we go. Take off flaps. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and get up here. Thing that's so nice about a simple plane, guys, is you can do this stuff with your trainee. And I'm gonna zigzag around. And then I'm gonna give you the controls, okay? Mm -hmm. Caleb, I'm gonna turn the plane. I'm in safe mode. mode. You're also in safe mode. Now I'm gonna go 50% throttle and here we go. You ready? Okay, you're, you're flying it now. Have control. Instructor has control. Student you got it. Have control. Pull up. Good job, now turn toward us. Good job, keep doing that. Now pull it back toward us. A Little bit more. Good job, buddy. Toward us, keep going. Slow it down just a little bit. Okay, turn it toward us a little bit more. Okay, he's turning away from us, so I'm gonna take back over just so I can get him pointed our way. So now listen, Caleb. I'm gonna turn it down the runway when I get close and then I'm gonna give you another shot at this, okay? Mm -hmm. You're doing a good job. I know it's a lot of pressure on the camera, okay? So I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. And here, I'm gonna let you take control. Are you good if I give you control? All right, you've got control. Pull up a little bit. Good job. So as you can see, camera crew, watch me for just a minute. I'm just holding the button and I'm watching over the pilot as though I'm flying, okay? So I have to pay attention, turn to your left. Good job, now keep turning until it gets to our direction. So with safe and a transmitter set up like this, let it come toward us, good job. Lower the altitude a little bit by pushing down on the sticks. 
Good job. Now get a couple shots of him doing this. I'm gonna take over here because it's a little tight, buddy. Okay, so you just keep doing what you're doing. Pretend like you're flying. I'm actually in control right now. Okay, I'm gonna just get you pointed back out at the sun. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and let you take control now. Good job. Now fly, pull up a little bit. Now turn to your left. That's the other way, bud. There you go. Now just keep doing that. Straighten out and fly straight. Good job. Now show him flying straight. See this? With safe, as soon as he lets go of the stick, he's fine. Now go ahead and turn left like you're going to come and land. Okay, now let that straighten out by letting go. You see, without safe, he wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, now I'm going to take control. You ready, bud? I got it. Okay, so I'm in control on coming out of safe. And because he's not really prepared to land yet, especially not on camera, there's too much pressure. I'm going to go ahead and just land this plane right now. And all you have to do is take all the fear as an instructor out of flying for these guys. And what's going to happen is you're going to get them in a position, throttle cuts on, reverse thrust is off, throttle cuts on. Safe is on, flaps are off. Okay, you did a great job, Caleb. All right, you'll be doing more later. All right, so that's the important part, is getting them a little bit of muscle memory. It doesn't need to be the whole thing. When you're flying on a simulator, you're gonna get lots of bad muscle memory, okay? The, the only way to counter that is to do real flying. When it's dead calm like this, it's very easy. When it's not dead calm like this, it gets a lot more complicated. And the simulator does a poor job of replicating wind, in my opinion. It does a great job of replicating stick position for flying a fake heli. It does a terrible job of helping you set up a heli. It does a great job of teaching you how to line up the plane on an approach and how to tell what direction you're going. It does a terrible job of helping you figure out what to do with a thermal. We can clear that. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up with the camera crew now, and I'm probably gonna go ahead and reset, so we'll pause and get everybody reset. Good job, Caleb, good job, Andrew. Okay, so one of the treacherous most things that you can do <laughs> in a married life Thanks. is to try to teach your spouse to fly radio-controlled airplanes. Is it hard? Is it hard? Yeah, it's okay. hard. Is it as easy as it looks when you're watching me fly? No. Okay, good. The truth is it's hard and you have to earn it. Megan has done a ton of time on the sticks and she's done it with and without help, but we just recently discovered this tool that we knew kind of existed, but hadn't explored. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It makes me feel comfortable letting you guys fly planes that I would never otherwise let you fly. And it gives you stick time and stick time to move the sticks. Mm -hmm. That is the hardest part of flying is, oh, take off laps, what do you mean? Take off laps, what do you mean? Yeah. If you haven't ever experienced that thought, then you aren't learning to fly. All right, so camera crew, listen. Your throttle cut's on, mine is off. I'm gonna give you control. I want you to try to roll this thing up and get it in the air. So, are you in safe or are you in AS3X? I'm in, AS3X. I'm in safe. Okay, good. All right, take off flaps one click towards you. Good job. Leave it that way until I give you other instruction. Okay. It will be helpful. Okay, that's gonna wanna veer toward us, so you're gonna need to do a little bit of rudder to get up in the air, okay? I might actually walk it over there just a little bit yeah, so it's easier on you. Good. There you go. Okay, so this is gonna be easy peasy, lemon squeeze, you're gonna be easy. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right, so. Everybody duck if I say duck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he go, means it. go okay. ahead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so. I want to talk about something. I just made a mistake there. I accidentally hit a button to fix, uh, to correct a circumstance. I wanted my switches in the same position. It does override controls when you do that, even oh. if you're holding the button. So that was my bad. Pause the camera and we'll reset. All right, so just so you can learn from my mistake there, I, I forgot to put my switch in safe mode before we took off, okay? She's gonna be in safe mode. I need to be in safe mode so that there's not a big jank when I take control. Okay. Okay, throttle cuts off. Yes. You're in one click of takeoff flaps. Yep. You have control. Okay. Pull up. Good job. Get it away from us. Keep the throttle. There you go. You're flying it, Megan. Okay. Now with safe, when you let go of the sticks, what happens? Pull up a little bit. There you it go. levels for me. Yep. <laughs> but it's going pitch down just a hair. A little bit. So what you can do is you can turn it toward us a lot more. 
Now I'm watching the tree lines, guys. Wait, Sorry. AS3X mode. Okay, so what happens is sometimes you get mixed up on your controls because the the plane disappears. Mm -hmm. Okay, this time of night, that's one thing you'll notice, especially as a lesser experienced pilot, okay? Now I've got my full flaps on. I want you to turn full flaps on. Okay. Okay. You're not in control, but you can still get your switches in configuration. Now I'm in safe. So when I give you controls, you'll know what direction you're going. Okay. You have controls. I have control. You might have trim in there. I wonder if you've been screwing with the trim. I don't think so. I was just messing with my switches last night. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to flip. I'm gonna do it for you. Okay. I'm gonna go to the middle mode. That's less flaps. Now you'll roll faster. Okay. Got it? Yes. All right, so the important part of training in an aircraft like this is just making sure that you take over with enough time to respond to something like an obstruction like trees. So I want you to take a left-hand turn and go away from us. Good job. Remember, mix in a little elevator so you pull down towards your belly and then kind of walk it over okay. to do your turn. You want to go toward the road a little bit more. Okay, sorry. I'm Next time. It's okay. Just use up the real estate. You remember, you're turning so sharp, you eventually in just a, a locked circle. So you got to get away from us, make your turn, and if you execute it the right way, you'll be far enough away to use up the whole real estate. Okay. okay? So fly down the road, get away from the flag. There you go. Just a little hint. See, you were turning toward the flag that whole time. You needed to go away from us just a hair. Okay, slow down a little bit. I'm going to take over because you're getting close to the ground. Okay. I'm going to restore control just a little bit by going up. Now, guys, the most important part of instructing somebody is giving them a chance to have some success. This is a dark time of night. You have control now. Okay. Nope. Now you do. The stick uh, reverberated and it thought I still needed to have control oh, okay. because when I let go, it kind of slammed back and forth. Pull up a little bit. There you go. Good job. Give a little bit more throttle and that'll help keep the speed up. Okay. Good job. So as you can see, it's not like she's doing anything spectacular, but <laughs> she's flying that plane right now. And if there's a problem, it takes literally milliseconds for me to get control. Now, camera crew, I want you to try to land once and I don't care if, I don't care if it goes in the grass. So what I want you to do is get altitude, go up another half or you know half again as high. Okay. Now I want you to turn on the big landing flap. So pull the stick towards you. Landing flaps. Okay, good job. It's gonna slow you way down. Now level that plane out, keep it level. Slow down. You can slow without stalling now. Okay. Okay, now turn it and just point it kind of past these trees. Go over the top of them, go farther. Okay, good job. Now just slow down. Let it out of the throttle all together. Okay. Pull that stick all the way down. Throttle down. Use the rudder to turn a little bit toward us. Yep, good job. Now straighten out, line up with the runway. It's a little bit challenging. I am here if you don't get it, okay? okay? Just line it up. Don't hit the stick, just come toward us. Get it out of the tall grass. Sorry. Okay, throttle, throttle cuts, cuts on. on. Everybody's safe, hit back. Okay. There you go. So that was a semi-successful flight. It's not quite on the runway, but everybody walked away. Pretty so good. that's a success. So the camera crew actually took off and landed with limited help from me. And when I say limited help, I mean, I was only interrupting to keep orientation mm -hmm. over here. That was the only time I had to jump in. And if you fly this time of night, you're gonna have the benefit of low wind, but you're gonna have the huge distraction of sometimes getting into this gray and your shadow will become the exact same color as the foreground. Mm -hmm. And so your plane will disappear. So your experience flying like this compared to flying with just like here, here, I don't know what to do. This is so much better. My, I'm gonna go I, grab that. You I talk. think it said last, I said last night, I get overwhelmed at the thought of getting overwhelmed. That's just how I think, because this is not a natural thing for me to do. So I really have to think about when he says turn left, I'm thinking, okay, which way do I go to turn left? It doesn't, my thumbs just don't do it like the boys do. So for me to be able to just immediately say, I need help and not have to hand it to him. That's what we've always done on smaller trainer planes is having to hand it, or even if I'm flying with Andrew to be able to have to hand it off right away, that's the part that then you have that more of a delay. So for him to just be able to immediately take over and say, I got it. Or when I lost my orientation, you know, then he's not taking it and trying to figure out where I was. So I like it so much more. It's so much more comforting to me 
because I don't feel like I'm going to get overwhelmed. And I like it a lot more because I can put them in command of a better flying plane. Right. Guys, an easier to fly plane makes all the difference in the world when learning to fly. If you're flying a crappy plane, it's gonna make it harder to learn. Now, we have historically talked about flying some of these 400 millimeter warbirds as a training toy or a training utility. But the truth is, and we have said it numerous times, it's not necessarily the best way to learn because you will learn some bad habits. Auto leveling and safe is helpful as it is hurtful at the same time because you learn a few bad habits. We'll just try to redo the landing she didn't quite get. <laughs> oh my goodness, we broke the freaking landing gear. At least it was you that broke it. At least it, it was me. me. That does make me feel better. <laughs> so anyway, guys, the whole point is if you can get them into a plane that's gonna fly a little bit better, you're gonna have a better experience. And at the end of the day, this is all about having a positive experience Everybody walks away having not crashed their planes. Evidently, I had a broken gear, so that's always fun. Uh, but I love doing this stuff, and I love being able to fly with the family. So what we're going to do next is we're going to try to really quickly switch to the T-28. That crash had nothing to do with it. We actually had it out ready to go because we're going to show you how to set it up the first time, and we'll be right back inside. Okay, so this landing gear broke. I actually have no clue how that broke, guys, right there but we're gonna have to replace that, so that's fine. We're gonna take this battery out. Same battery safety as always when you're doing training. Always be prepared to do it as safe as possible. To charge this thing back up, suppose you're new or a beginner, you're gonna plug it into your charger. You can plug it in right after you fly if it's not like too warm. If it's real hot, don't do it, okay? You'll know, trust me. Okay, so that's gonna charge. Now we just had some 2200 3S's that we charged. So we're gonna get this one ready to go into the T28. We'll fix that after a bit, but we don't have time to waste. So if I wanna fly this plane with a trainer, the first thing I need to do is make a new model in both of these planes, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is open the lid. I'm gonna first of all click back and cancel and I'm gonna scroll. It might take me a little bit to find this. So we'll come right back. Okay, so I found it in the instructor and the instructor you may notice is the NX-10. This is an NX-6. So if you're learning to fly and you wanna invest a little bit but you don't wanna invest in this, you can start here and go to this and then this can be your buddy box tool, okay? But I suggest the eight still. Eight to 10 is better than eight to six or 10 to six rather, because you have a disparity of multiple controls you don't want to lose four controls, okay? So now, when you're ready to do that, get your plane ready, get your plane working. This one's probably not bound, but it's very quick to use this one. So we'll just go ahead and do this one real quick. I don't know if I'm gonna put the, I think I might put it in vertical. Nope, I'll put it in this way. There it is, now it's held. Nope, that's flat, so I gotta go in the other way. So folks, if you've never experienced this T28, it's one of the best planes you can get as a beginner because it's super fun and it's a warbird, which is cool too. So as a beginner, you can really find some success. Now, if we don't get a chance to fly this because it gets dark too quick, my apologies. We have not bound this, so I'm gonna go ahead and bind by turning this plane away from me, controlling it, and then I'm gonna go into this T28 and I'm gonna go to bind like always. Okay, so now I need to see what's going on with the wings. And we have takeoff and landing flaps, okay? okay? That is a setup that we built a long time ago, but we need to make sure that our other model has the same features. And if it doesn't, you can build a model that has less features and it'll be fine. I'm gonna check my throttle cut. Okay, throttle's working, throttle cut is working. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, so I don't see safe select, so I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go to forward programming. I'm gonna go to gyro settings, save select. I'm gonna turn it on, and then I'm gonna assign it to gear. Safe is on, safe is off, okay. 
All right, so how do we know safe is on? Stick down and back. There's a change of state, that's off. Boy, that's hard to tell. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is throttle cuts on, I'm gonna flip the plane upside down because it's kind of hard to differentiate. Safe is on, it's gonna attempt to level the plane, but you'll notice that it is only doing one of the ailerons. That's because we use the stock configuration on this, unlike what we did on the slow ultra stick where we did a full reset. So no big deal. We have flap rounds if we want them, but we can just choose not to use them too. Throttle cut is on. And if I'm ready, I can go ahead then take my second transmitter that's gonna become my trainer. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF. You can also, from the regular screen, you're gonna cancel them back, and then you can scroll until you find it. There's the T28 1.1, select. Now you're gonna notice you have no control. Throttle cut is on, throttle cut is on, flaps. Everything is set to the correct position. While I press and hold the I button, nothing happens. That's because student mode isn't turned on. So I believe on this model, I'm gonna have to go down to start trainer. I'm gonna be the instructor, okay? And then over here, I'm gonna have to click and scroll all the way down to start trainer. And I'm gonna go to student. Now you're gonna notice nothing happens except this RF goes off and that RF stays on, okay? Nothing happens when I press the button. That means I don't have it set up, okay? I don't even know why that's in the menu. We've tried that a number of times, but really what has to happen is we're gonna go into the menu, we're gonna scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, and then we're gonna go into trainer, and I'm gonna set up wireless trainer, and I'm gonna set it to pilot link, because I'm gonna be the pilot, and I'm gonna give the student control of all this stuff. You can choose, you can choose what you want them to not, and then I have it set to switch eye with inhibit. I'm gonna turn that active. That means if I move my sticks, it's live, okay? Which can be a double-edged sword like it happened a couple of times. Now I hit bind, throttle cuts on, plane safe, we trust it. Now I'm gonna come over to the student. I'm gonna scroll down to bind, and it's really that easy. But you see what happened? Nothing. We've noticed that when you turn on, and we are in 3.08, the same firmware version. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off. It takes forever on this one. Okay, there's your RF, okay? Because I tried that student mode on off, it didn't work. So because it didn't work, we skipped that step. Then I scroll down and I go to bind. It's still binding. So I hit yes, and then I choose to bind. See? Now they're gonna walk out of the menu. Auto configure. Pretty cool, huh? So now, Elevator up, elevator down, nothing, right? Elevator up, elevator down, something. Roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right. Everything's working, throttle cuts on. And again, test it, always test your throttle cut. Throttle cut is now off. I'm gonna go ahead and yield the controls over, make sure it doesn't start the prop. It didn't start the prop, throttle cut is off. Holding the instructor button, I'm gonna test throttle. Go ahead and hold the tail. Throttle's working, throttle cut works. Very good, throttle, throttle sticks down, throttle cuts back on. I'm gonna yield control to the student. I'm gonna left, right. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Kickoff flaps, landing flaps are not set. Here's why, because this is, if you go down to, how do we set this one up just to see? I do have flap system. So this is something you'll have to do. If you want flaps, you can go in, you can go to aircraft type and you can set this to flap on, okay? Then you can go down and set your flap system to the switch you want. And you can just go in here and copy exactly the way you set it up. So it's minus 40. And you can actually set these different for your student than you can for the instructor because you may need a little extra mixing for the student, okay? So all I'm doing is just copying right now. The reason I show you guys this is because most people just gloss over it like you should know. This is something I did not know. Whoops. There's two mil two seconds and two seconds, okay? And then my safe is on, correct? Okay, see nothing's happening. That's because I'm out of control right now, okay? In control. Okay, see what happened? It didn't work right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and disqualify that for the moment. Whoops, hold on. Holding this down, roll left, roll right. I'm just gonna shut off your flaps 
for now because it's not set up right and it'll take me a little bit of doing to actually set that up. So aircraft type is gonna go back to normal. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I bet we had it set a different way. I'll talk about that in another video, but for now, this one's not gonna have flaps. We're gonna have all the main control surfaces and we're ready to rock and roll. Now, I can also control that on my end and let her not control it. So, we're gonna get ready to go and we're gonna fly it right now. Stay tuned. Okay, so we need to go into forward programming. It's gonna connect. If it doesn't connect, then that means we can't do that, okay? Yep, it's not gonna work. Okay, so if you try to do forward programming on the student transmitter, it's not gonna work because forward programming goes through you, okay? The reason that I was checking is because safe is not turning on and off over here. So we're just not gonna worry about it, except if you were worried about it, all you have to do is go over to monitor mode and see we're on gear. We go over to monitor mode, we're on gear. So I'm not sure why that's not switching, but we'll just go with it for now. Part of the reason that it's probably not working is this model was created on this transmitter, upgraded through two DX8s, excuse me, NX8s, and then into the NX10, and now it's been copied back. So it's been kind of a fiasco. So the best thing to do to fix all that would be just create a new model. Also, I need to reprogram and update the firmware on this receiver so I can fully support flapper rods. But we're gonna fly next, stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna fly this now. This is the one we just set up inside it. As you can see, it's pretty much dark. So we're gonna go ahead and try this right now. And it's gonna be a perfect opportunity to show just how quick you can actually set that up. The whole course of the events in there was probably 10 minutes. Yeah. And we've got good golden hour. Just the last little bit because of that cloud is about to disappear, okay? So timer's cleared, timer's cleared. Okay. Yes. Throttle cuts off. I'm gonna go ahead and taxi. Just verify this thing has very little movement on the nose gear, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take off. I'm gonna fly this plane and make sure I'm comfortable with the way it's flying. As an instructor, folks, you need to take responsibility for the plane in case landing gear break off while you're landing. You wanna know what's wrong with it, if there is anything wrong with it. Okay, everything feels very good, very robust, and just normal, okay? All right, so camera crew, you can tell we're going toward us. You see how I go wide, mm -hmm. like I'm on the runway, and then I just fly through, okay? okay? A little bit faster than the slow ultra stick. I'd like to be able to control flapper on, so let's see if that works for me. Here's takeoff flaps, here's landing flaps. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're gonna have control of that, but I'm gonna go to takeoff flaps, and then I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to give you control once I get to the end of the street, okay? So you ready? You're in control. Turn it to the left. I don't have control. Okay, I have it. I must have bumped a button. Okay. Remember guys, as the instructor, it's your responsibility to maintain control of that aircraft. Okay, now I'm gonna get down the road and I'm gonna give you control. Okay. Are you good? Yep. Okay, pull up. There we go, okay. Whoa. Pull up, okay, I got it. So you guys see how that worked, how quick that happens? Okay, now camera crew, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try that again. Okay. Turn your safe on. I'm gonna have safe on as soon as I get out here. Safe is on, okay? I'm trying to see if it's actually yeah, it is. Okay, now you're gonna be in control now. Okay, got it. Pull up, there you go. Okay, there we go. All right, so safe was off in my mode and off on hers, so she just didn't get it turned on, I guess. So as you can see, she is flying now, but she's definitely got less overall control of that aircraft, so you have to be prepared as the instructor to take over. It's not a big deal, and generally you wouldn't be doing it in the near dark, okay? Some people would call that irresponsible. But. I have never flown this plane. Yeah. And by the way, we set up flap runs on this plane. This is one that Andrew loves to fly. Mm -hmm. And we've had lots of crashes with it. It's been an amazing, really fun aircraft. But I also by right should go in and set up the flap runs so that it is correctly set up if I'm gonna use flap runs. Or better yet, do some inboard flaps. This is a great plane, it deserves inboard flaps. Okay, I want you to lower your throttle just a little bit and bring it back to planet Earth. Okay. So on your next circuit, just half that distance. So the other thing too is, is as an instructor, I've tried my best with uh, the kids and with Megan while we're working together to give them a chance to make a few mistakes. Like what was happening out there, I could tell it was gonna become an unrecoverable circumstance. Mm -hmm. And so I took over right away. Sometimes with the kids, I've let them just crash a few times. It's nice with this, I don't have to let them do it. You're doing a great job, just keep doing what you're doing. Okay. 
Do you want to try to land it? Nope. You sure? Yep. You're doing such a good job. I mean, you literally could. Just fly straight out. Let's see if you can get it. Just pretend like you're going to fly over the runway and then chop the throttle, but you got to get out over the trees to go up a little higher, pull up. Okay, now turn, shut off your throttle. Watch how it glides, watch your elevator. Just line up, don't land, just line up. Oh. There you go. Not so much input, you're doing fine. Hold on, I got it, I got it. So now next time, you're gonna do the same thing, only you're gonna go out a little bit further this time. Okay. Stay up above the tree line so you keep visibility. I will have control in seconds if you make a mistake, okay? okay? okay. Don't worry. Okay, slow down, slow down. Get out of your throttle, use up your power. Use up your power. Okay, a little bit of throttle, a little bit of throttle. Okay, I've got control okay. just because I can't tell if you're gonna sink. Yeah, I can't. Okay, I'm gonna get you set on a glide slope that's gonna work. Okay. Okay. So remember, 2200 3S, we got forever to fly on this thing. Okay? Right. Okay, so we have, according to this one minute, I don't buy it for a second. Okay. See, I got the wings tip just so I can see. Okay. okay. I'm gonna give you control now. Are you good? Yeah. Okay, I'm out of throttle. It's yours. It's yours. Okay. Am I landing? Yeah. Oh. Try. Try. Ooh. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay. Sorry. I'm in control. You're fine. You didn't do anything wrong. So what I might do is it's getting it's getting to where it's kind of dark. So I'm gonna just get you in a situation where you get to control it onto the ground, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna get you right over the runway. This is totally cheating, guys, but sometimes confidence is all it takes to give somebody the ability to land. Okay, so I'm gonna line you up. Okay. That's a challenging landing. Okay, you've got the controls. <laughs> Why didn't you land on the middle of the runway? Because <laughs> you lined me up. <laughs> okay, so throttle cuts on. What was your experience with the T28? It was easier to fly circles like I normally do. My biggest fear is landing because when I'm coming at myself, I have a really hard time keeping my orientation, not keeping my orientation, but knowing which way my controls go because then it's coming at me. So it feels backwards. It's just and not- I've backwards. tried for years to make her think like a little boy that's moving the joystick inside of an airplane. And she just was never a little boy I'm inside not a of the boy. airplane. I, so yes. So when you're a kid hard. and you grow up loving aircraft and thinking about that and flying flight simulators and playing and you know pretending you have a yoke or a stick and you're flying a jet or whatever it is, you just get used to Okay, I move the stick, it's gonna go that way. That's right. what I do. I'm like, this is the stick. You're flying that airplane, okay? And it doesn't make sense to her because it's just not something that she has connected the dots with for years. And I have the benefit of almost a decade now, almost nine years of flying and teaching other people how to fly. That's where a simulator would be good for me. I've learned to take off because the plane usually starts in front of me and I know I just need to throttle and going. elevator up. For me, the benefit of a simulator would come in with getting that muscle memory when I'm coming into land. Even when I fly with Andrew, he tells me the same thing on the simulator. Once and admittedly- it's coming at me, that's where my confusion comes in. So that would be helpful for me. But to know that Brian can land it in the grass for me. Trade size. Also helpful. So admittedly, no, Andrew over here, because oh. the sun's <laughs> over there. So admittedly, when you try to have a student do something in adverse conditions, whether it's too dark, too bright, too hot, too cold, too windy, too calm, then you're gonna put them in impossible circumstances. So the instructor has to take the responsibility for that. So obviously this plane came down, we have no damage. Uh, there have been damage, by the way. This is from a co completely different event. I think I crashed into a tree actually, screwing off with this. Or I turned on flaperons and I think I might not have reversed them or I did something stupid and crashed it. And then Andrew, you've crashed it a few times, haven't you? So at any rate, guys, there's a million great choices. And this is such a powerful tool. And if you're not taking advantage of it, this is what I wanted to share as the purpose of this video. If you want, if you want to get one of these for yourself, okay? Don't be afraid to buy the entry level. I have said for years, it's good money after bad to buy a six compared to buying a 10. And, I, and that is true. If you are alone, go ahead and Sorry, smack me. I will. Okay, as soon as you see it's it. It's gone. <laughs> so if you're buying this, you're taking $300 and throwing it in the garbage can, right? Wrong. Because even though this costs a lot more and it's gonna be a lot more robust, it's the same exact system. You get used to all the same stuff. You can carry your models up, but generally you kind of can't go back because stuff gets screwed up. That's what's happened today when we try to set up flaperons. Okay, and then also, um, I just want to say, I still want you to try to get the more expensive one because I feel like it's a better use of your money. Because here's the thing, you can always then get a second 10 and then you give up nothing, okay? 
But the thing is, it's just, you know, that's the difference between another model that's bought and paid for and set up in your transmitter. Right. So you have to think, if you're on a tight RC budget, you might want to end up with an 8 and a 10 as opposed to a 6 and an IX14 and be twice the budget. Right. So just remember, if you're thinking about your dollars and cents and you're very pen, penny, penny wise, then what you want to do is you want to get the best one you can get. And then don't worry about if later you get the 20 because there is an NX20 or later you get the IX20 or you get the IX12, which is kind of sort of discontinued, I think. IX14. What am IX I trying 14. to say? IX14 and IX20. Thank you. The that, 12 is that gone thing. now. Yeah, the yeah. 12 is gone now. The 14 is taken over. So the IX14. And at any rate, there will probably be other NXs too. We just can't talk about them. <laughs> so I don't want to accidentally slip and say something I'm not supposed to say. And the same thing is we have these set up on the simulator. So when the boys are flying, they're you, practicing yeah. with an actual You transfer. can actually plug this thing in. That's a USB port with a little adapter that comes out. I'll find that in a second. I see it. That's a USB micro. You can turn the light on. You turn the flash on, Andrew? You know how to turn the flash on? There you go. So that's a USB micro. You can plug that into your computer with just a USB micro cable. Go ahead and turn it on, that's fine. Um, and then what I have is, did you find it, Camper? Yes, this is just a little adapter I use. Make sure your throttle cuts on because we are live. That's what I use so that when I charge my battery, which incidentally, another reason to go with this is it comes with a 6,000 milliamp hour. Uh, pack as opposed to the six, which comes with a 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's considerably quicker to run out of battery guys. And so on ours, we upgraded all of them to the 6000s. Yes. And then I think I took one and I took two 2000s and made a parallel connector. So I had 4,000. Yes. So I guess at the end of the day, and I don't mean to cut you off no. camera crew, but at the end of the day, Megan, ha, <laughs> so if you're gonna get an NX10, you're gonna get what you need for years to come. If you get a six, you're probably gonna outgrow it quick, but you're not throwing money away like I have historically said. I've come to realize after having gone through this little short experiment, mm -hmm. it probably is not a terrible place to be. However, just keep in mind, your eight models will not carry to your six models well. They will carry, but you will lose features and you won't necessarily know why or how because sometimes that stuff doesn't write to memory locations that do anything on a six. So if you go from eight to an eight, you're fine. You go from a 10 to a 10, you're fine. A six to a six, you're fine. Six to a 10, you're fine. 10 to a six, not so much. You guys follow what I'm saying? So a couple things to consider. Whoops, I went to my list. Why did I do that? That's weird. I think you bumped it when you slipped it. Okay. But anyway, guys, so I just want to talk about that for a minute and say over the years, we have been very, very pro get the best you can get. And we still are pro get the yeah. best you can get. But when it comes to flying with your family and with friends and with people that want to get into the hobby, because really at the end of the day, what the heck did I do here? I don't know. This is so weird. I don't even know how to get out of the screen. I swear, it says clear. Where's clear? How do I go back? Guys, look at, look at this. It's so weird. It's like I'm stuck in this mode. <laughs> it's funny. It, it is funny what happens. Okay, camera crew, I'm going to, I'm going to give you control and see what happens. Okay. You have control? Yeah, I wonder if I that don't. thing died. So anyway, I guess at the end of the day, we just want to show you guys that you can do the buddy box function really easy. And it's not something that needs to be super intimidating. You can go through and you can watch our setup when we're setting up this T28. Now, let's speak to the elephant in the room. I just broke the landing gear on the SUS. Oh, I know. What a mess. There's but even those. still, that wasn't meant to be the focus of this video, <laughs> but it does kind of suck that that happened. Because the truth is, when you buy that SUS, buy extra gear. We said that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. I think we said it in our second Flaperons. thoughts, which we're not sure if that's been published yet, but we do show how we set up Flaperons and it's an awesome mod. Uh, it's a lot more work than it should be, if you ask me, but that's because they had a control arm you had to somebody add. Somebody built a servo arm. I had to build a servo arm because we couldn't get the $3.99 servo arm stock. kit because it was out of stock. But we'll show you how to do it with the parts that come in the servo that you buy to supplement the one that came in that. And by the way, between you and me, from RC Influencer side, yeah, it should have flaperons to begin with. There's no question in my mind, correct? Right. It should it have been there, very helpful. but it wasn't. The idea is now it's a little cheaper to get in if you aren't gonna use flaperons. And to be honest, the beginner doesn't need them, but I'm gonna tell you something. 
that slow ultra stick is way more flyable with flaps. And that's how this whole thing beginner. started. We filmed our flap around video yesterday. As we were walking in, I said, I, I can fly. see myself flying that thing. Yep. And so we're like, well, let's figure it out. And yep. then we wasted most of our flying time setting up the transmitter. And then we came out but, here and I was like, what the heck? I know, but we figured out how to do it. Why didn't we do this before? So. Because I've been flying on a little ready to fly. And it's just glitchier and yeah, we have to and do the passing thing and it makes you nervous and it makes me nervous. And you're flying like this and then you let go of the sticks and then it rolls and you, you don't have any real explanation for what's going on. I don't even know. Or the battery dies and it's like way out there and I don't know. And you just don't want to be in circumstances like that as, as an instructor or as a student, especially if you are you're married. married. <laughs> so it makes things more complicated. So that being said, if you're fortunate enough to have a spouse that wants to fly with you, then you're very blessed. And obviously we're very blessed to have the camera crew who is helping us all the time on this. And I mean, it's a huge, huge responsibility that she's taking care of. So we really appreciate you. So you guys, when you support Brian Phillips RC, you're not really supporting me, you're supporting our whole family. In fact, I'm kind of the least supported because what happens is my joy and fun comes from all the planes that we get to play with. And I mean, I absolutely love it. But at the end of the day, the whole family is putting effort into this channel and you may not understand it, but like even the kids do, all the time and off camera, they're working their tails off. Uh, you guys don't see that, it's all behind the scenes. You know, hurry up and clean the house so we can film. Get out of the living room, go into the bedroom, go into the basement. You know, these are the things that happen in real world Brian Phillipsville. Yeah. Okay. So, but that being said, it's because we love this community of our seers. We wanna give you guys the best crack at success. We wanna help you separate the BS from the truth in all these marketing you know, gimmicks. agendas and gimmicks like the landing gear don't break on the SUS. Yeah, give me a break. Um, the SUS is a great plane, but the landing gear are really breakable. <laughs> As you could see here, that was a perfect landing and I don't know why they broke. Unless yeah. unless you caught something when you flipped in the grass. It's possible, that's what I was but wondering. They didn't, but then they? I flew around and I, I came in and this was like a perfect landing. So I don't understand. I don't all, all I can say is this, carbon fiber on that design, I believe they changed the design and that's the old style because we did get those yes, earlier we on. we did. So, so it might just, be different now. Yeah. So anyway, um, the other thing too is if you get one of those and you want to reinforce yours, take a little heat shrink, slide it over the tube where they're going to intersect. It will be barely enough to fit. It gets mm -hmm. tight there. Yeah. And then when you heat carbon fiber, you can break it. So do it quick and do it with a heat gun from distance. Walk in quick, let it shrink and get away from it. Because uh, you can't actually catch fire to carbon fiber. Oh, pretty that'd easy. be fun. Yeah, it is. It's exciting. We should maybe try that though with the gear that we have left. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. But either way, it's a great plane, you'll love it. This is an amazing plane, by the way. And why is the Buddy Box so dang good? Because A, you can fly whatever plane you want. It could be a nitro plane with $1,500 with the servos in it. That would be stupid, but you could do it. Right. But Andrew's getting to the point where he could start flying some bigger, faster yep. jets and he can fly with you. Yep, You know, and I could not have a heart attack. Right and he cannot destroy my plane on accident in total good conscience, you know, and feel bad about it. Because right. even though we have lots of planes to crash, I still don't like them when they get crashed because then I have to go fix them. Yep. So there's lots of benefit to be garnered by getting yourself set up on a buddy box. Mm -hmm. All right, so hopefully this answered all your questions. We're gonna step forward just so we're in the obnoxious light. Great. And we want you guys to understand that we are here for you if you want to help support us in return for the efforts that you see on our channel. Hopefully you see them clearly. You can buy these planes, transmitters, batteries, chargers, all the stuff that we bring to you on this channel will be linked at the top of the video mm -hmm. description. And that's the easiest way for you to get A, into the hobby yourself, B, enjoy the hobby yourself, C, help us to perpetuate this small community an ecosystem of RC where we get planes from manufacturers. We evaluate them publicly for you. We help encourage them by bringing sales from you. Then they pay us small commissions and it makes this little cycle, okay? Now you may not like that cycle and we appreciate it. And some of you guys don't like it. You'd rather support a local hobby shop and that's great, whatever, do what you gotta do. But at the end of the day, remember, is your local hobby shop filming this video? Are they putting in the time? Are their kids going to the basement for four hours while you film? Are they helping to clean up the house? And I'm, I say that only lightly because really at the end of the day, we would do it even if that was a function of it, and it is. But your local hobby shop, if you have one that doesn't support you, then support us and we will help to support you. Now, that doesn't mean you should always buy 100% of everything. I mean, you're always gonna have stuff you need right now. And you also wanna help support them so they're not going out of business. So it is important that you spread the money and that's an important thing to do. But just remember, 
The money chases where you're getting help. The money chases where you're getting the influence you need. If you're learning what you need to learn from us and you're not from the hobby shop, then reward us. Okay. We it's just have, like any other business. We do have a lot of people overseas that can't yeah. order from the link. That's right. And that's what so I was just getting to. Okay. So the people that are over in Europe, they don't have Australia. the opportunity to follow from the links, New yep. Zealand. These are people we talk to all the time. We have tons of supporters, people that are doing Patreon because they really want to help us financially because they get a lot of value out of it. So they'll do Patreon. They might throw us, you know, 10 bucks a month or five bucks a month or $1 a month or whatever mm -hmm. it is, or 50 or a hundred or whatever it is. It doesn't matter guys. You don't need, the number is not important to us. What's important is helping to bear the burden of responsibility to keep this ecosystem alive. And if you can buy from the links, that is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. We always say that, we always have, we've never hidden behind it. We don't do this fastest, cheapest, best BS. We try to teach you what they really do and when they really break on camera, unfortunately, for the world to see, okay? So those guys don't want you to see that. We show it just like it is, okay? So at the end of the day, we're gonna teach you what you need to know as best we can based on our personal experience, not based on what we know from somebody else's experience, based on what we've personally done. And also based on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other reviews, okay? So if you know your buddy out here and he's got like 14 planes and he's like, oh, that plane sucks compared to what, 14 other planes? How about I tell you it sucks compared to 400 other planes? Right. That's a pretty good measure of truth, okay? Now compared to one other plane, the guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So what happens is you need to look where you're getting your advice from. And that's the same as true as if I was out here reviewing some jet turbine, I wouldn't know if I was out here reviewing some <coughs> M4 <coughs> where I don't know how to set it yeah. up. So anyway, just stay tuned guys. We have so much more coming and we want to teach you as much as we can, but just remember you are coming alongside us. We're doing this too. So when we're out here learning how to we're do this stuff, too. we're learning it too. So you're in good company at Brian Phillips RC. And the best way to keep this company running is to buy stuff from the links or support us through Patreon or PayPal. Super thanks, and I don't know, we'll probably turn on the stupid memberships on YouTube. We gotta oh. figure something out. Because I hate asking you guys for money, and we don't wanna ask for money, so we always felt the best way is to help support the ecosystem. Because that's easier way for us to win, you to win, manufacturers to win. And then the people that support us will feed us more, and you guys will get better content, and we will have better, stronger relationships with you, because we're bringing you the full truth, and we'll have good relationships with them. So when we get a real dog that's just garbage, we can come out and say, this thing sucks. And they won't say, nah, we're never gonna touch you guys with the 10 foot pole. Right. We, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta have a good relationship with our vendors, merchants, hobby shops, family. And that's the thing, you know, you might be looking at a hundred dollar plane compared to a thousand dollar plane. Thousand dollar plane better be dang good. Hundred dollar plane, you know what? You're gonna have to tolerate some problems, okay? So that's what we're here to help you with. And when you're looking at stuff online, it all looks It all looks the same. the same. And it all looks amazing. And it all looks amazing. And if it and looks if it looks bad and it's still online, Chinese marketing <laughs> at its best. They yeah. figure out how to make beautiful planes look terrible. And I'm like, what are you doing? What is that angle? Why do you exaggerate the nasty fake landing gear? I see that. It just makes me cringe. I know. You hate that. So anyway, guys, from RC Addict to another RC Addict, we hope we can bring you in. Here's a free sample. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but at the end of the day, we really love doing this. We want you guys to know some of the inside baseball. If you're still watching our long videos at this point, we know you really care about us, so we appreciate you being there. The kids know that you guys are supporting us. They are in the loop on what's going on, and it is very real in our very real lives. And I have to go back to work tomorrow. Ugh. You do. So anyway, I'm going to go back to the real world and do my day job, and it's going to be terrible. And we're going to take a vacation from your vacation. Yeah, they're going to love it. So anyway, guys, we hope we answered some of your questions about buddy boxing and uh, some of the questions about how we actually operate our small business. We try to lead you guys, um, you know, in front of all the different, you know, details to help bring mm -hmm. us to where we are and so that you can make a good value judgment for yourself. Also, T28, we'll link to that. SUS, we'll link to that. We'll link to the landing gear. And, and all joking aside, we won't link to the landing gear, but what you can do is if you ever want to look at a plane, just click on the link. It'll bring you to the landing page that's kind of got like the stuff from Horizon Hobby. And then you'll see what you've got. There's optional parts and replacement parts, manuals. And then sometimes there's like firmware updates and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's all just kind of scroll down a little bit and it's right there. It's right under where you yeah. pick all of your required, like do you need a battery yeah. transmitter? Yep. Right and if that. you're not sure how this works, when you click on the links, they use cookies to track that we sent you there. Okay. We also have our own trackable stuff so that we can tell, you know, analytics about where our, you know, people are coming from mm -hmm. and how we can best utilize that information so that we can help reach you guys with new content. So it's just like a hundred percent of every other RC thing you do online, just so you know. And I know some of you guys are like, why well, are data miners? No, this is just the way the world works. That's the BPRC. BPRC me. Yeah. It just helps us to make sure that when there's a link, 
we can direct it where it needs to be mm -hmm. so that it's not going to some malicious site. So, yeah. and it's important that we do that for our security, for your security. We, we're always looking out for you guys. We've had vendors that have turned out to be thieves and we have cut them off like the snakes they are. And it was quick, but then some of our competitors currently work with those same people, just to let you know, which is very disappointing. It is. Kind of it's kind of disgusting. But anyway, if you know who oh, that okay. is and you know who they are and you know what they're doing, just it's cringeworthy. You know. And I'm not going to go into any more details, but at the end of the day, don't get ripped off. You got to watch out for yourself. Anyway, uh, we're here to help you do that in the best possible way on Brian Phillips RC. We have so much more content coming. We hope you guys enjoy it. We love this hobby and we love helping you guys get better at it. So stay tuned. If you're just getting back to the hobby, welcome. If you're new to the hobby, welcome. We're here for you at Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching. All right, so guys, thanks for bearing with us there. It was getting dark outside. I wanted to show you one more detail and it was just gonna be hard to show outside. So we're like, let's come inside and show. So let's say you come home from the field and you wanna go flying like two days later and you have used your transmitters on other models, okay? So to simulate that, I'm gonna turn on my NX6 and I'm gonna to switch to a different model. Okay, so I'm on the Trojan. I'm gonna back and cancel. I'm just gonna to go to some other, like the Futura, okay? So I selected that model, walked out, RF is on. I'm gonna turn on my transmitter here. That thing's de-energized by the way. Okay, so we got this turned on. I'm gonna just click. I'm gonna to scroll to the Aero, Aero Cobra, okay? So just, just another plane, right? So I'm on a different plane. I'm on a different plane. As far as I'm concerned, there should be no connection between these two, but there might be, and we're gonna test that theory right now. So now that we're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. We're done on that. We had the Futura called up, okay? So we're shutting that off. Okay, I'm gonna shut this off. We're going home, we're having a good old time. We've got it on the wrong plane, okay? So we go home. Now, I don't know that the model memory is gonna know how long it's been off. I don't think that makes a difference, okay? So we come home, we wanna fly again. Camera crew and I get out to the field. We're getting ready to energize this plane. The normal process would be turn it on, okay? Let it boot up. Okay, it's in the wrong plane. Make sure your switches are safe. Throttle cut, throttle sticks down. We're safe to go. Back and cancel. Select the T28 Trojan. Select the model. And I want to set this up so we can buddy box again, okay? So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to go ahead and energize the plane, control the plane for safety reasons. Once we trust it, we're good. Let everything boot. Safe is on, okay? And we're going to turn, turn and burn. Okay, so everything's working there. All the features are working and throttle cut is currently tested and on. Now it's off. Working good there, throttle cuts back on. So we're good to go. Now, obviously there's no student. No students attached, gives you a warning, okay? So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my other transmitter. The other transmitter is picked up on the F, uh, FMS Futura, so I'll cancel them back. I'm gonna scroll down to this plane. Now, how do I know that's the right plane? Because I know it's the right plane. I'm gonna walk back out. Okay, now, this may still be connected, but it may not. Depends on what you've done since the time you flew this trainer, okay? If you've gone with another train plane, it will probably stay connected to the other model because the bind is still hypothetically connected to this. Let's find out. I'm gonna press my test, my I button. As you can see, it's still working, okay? So, as you can see, it's already set up in the student mode right now as this was the instructor, okay? So it's important that you guys understand when you go out to the model field, you fly, you come home, you do something else, there's a good possibility you're gonna have to go back in and bind it again. So it's really not that hard, just remember, you use the instructor generally to set up what needs to be done and you do that through system setup. I don't even know what the heck that does. Why that's there. Why that's yeah, there, it's either. just such a backward thing. Now it's possible that there's other features built into like the IX line that we aren't aware of, and it might like have a shortcut built in or something like that. But for now, all I'm gonna say is this. We've showed you how to set up the trainer. It is one of the most valuable tools you're gonna have if you have dual spectrum transmitters. Now, there is a possibility you can also cross control from other series, but I can't guarantee that that's gonna work. I have a DX18, but it's a Gen 1. Even though the firmware has been kept up to date on that, I don't wanna give you bad information, so I'm not gonna to speak to whether or not you can do a DX with an NX or an NX with an IX. I have to assume the NX and the IX should work together because they're both current right now. But remember, I would suggest 
that the higher level transmitter be the instructor transmitter because you're gonna have more access to channels and you can always control on the instructor side all the things that they don't have enough channels to control, okay? So you can give them standard pitch, roll, yaw, all that stuff. And you can also set up your dual rates a little bit higher, okay? So like if you see here, okay? So those are set higher on ailerons. They're set higher on rudder, and, or they're set the same on rudder. So it's just ailerons that there's more expo on. So if you have a pilot that wants to have more expo and dual rates or lower rates, you can do that. And it's really nice because as soon as you pass controls to them, they're flying what they're used to. And guess what? Later on, when you're ready to fly this without the instructor involved, that's the next thing I'm gonna show you. So power down the plane, you're done flying for the afternoon. Instructor has gone home. You're like, you know what? I fired my instructor because I think I'm ready to do it, the camera crew says, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna now turn this off. I'm just gonna go through a full power sequence because that's really what's gonna be more like what you're going through, okay? So you come out to the flight field, you're the uh, student. You come out to fly, turn on the transmitter, you get the plane ready, you plug it in, and you're like, okay, is this gonna work? You can tell right now it's probably not gonna work because there's nothing there. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go down to student, start trainer. You're not either, you wanna inhibit, right? Well, you're not connected. So if you wanna fly yourself, then you have to rebind yourself, okay? So what you're gonna do is if you wanna fly by yourself now, throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down, click, highlight the bind, be prepared, but don't do it. This isn't flashing, so I'm gonna press the singular uh, bind button here. So pressing the bind button, now I'm gonna bind. Dance. Okay. Auto configuring. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test our surfaces. Everything is working with the exception of flap rounds because guess what? The master has all this stuff worked out. Now, throttle cuts on. When I press I, nothing weird happens. So this is your friendly reminder that if you go from student to instructor and then you become the pilot, you're probably going to have to fix some changes if you do anything weird like what we've done on this model, okay? So that's important for you to understand because this particular model was set up with regular wing type, one aileron and then the tail's normal. This one was set up with flapperons and all the fix-ins, okay? This one doesn't have any way to stop this unless we were to go in and set up the flapperons. So the reason I'm showing you this is because you need to understand that if you are the student currently, you're getting ready to be done with your instructor, you may need to reevaluate your control surfaces when you bind absent the instructor, mm -hmm. okay? So now let's go ahead and fix this problem. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power. We're gonna go back to the field with the instructor the next day. I'm gonna shut off the transmitter. You'll be prepared to apologize to the instructor for screwing everything up. Correct camera crew? Right. So you're gonna turn on the transmitter, okay? We wanna be bound, so I'm gonna click, hover over the bind, be ready. You can also just turn it on while pressing the bind button. Now this is not gonna have anything bound to it. At this point, as far as it's concerned, I'm gonna press and hold this button. I wanna get this back on its feet, and then I'm gonna go to bind, disconnect, there we go. Controlling the plane, being prepared for anything weird, like the prop to start, it shouldn't and it won't. Everything's dancing, except for this. Roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps. Everything's working, everything's set up. Okay, great, now let's see what happens when we turn on our fellow transmitter. First things first, so before we do that, let's press this. Yep, it's still set up as trainer, okay? I'm gonna turn this on. Now let's see what happened, does all hell break loose? I don't think so. Let's press the student button. Guess what? Still working guys, okay? So the cool thing is you can try to screw it up and there's plenty of ways to do it. But I just wanted to show you that there's plenty of ways for it to work fine. So just always 100% check all the surfaces. Yep. Because this is after all, one of the more complicated things that you're gonna do with this transmitter, especially since there's two of them now working together with one plane, okay? All right guys, hopefully we answered 
the questions that you had. We hope you guys see value in this channel. And if you're still watching at this point, we assume you do. Uh, we have so much more where this came from and we hope to incorporate this more into our channel as camera crew, Megan, my wife, likes to fly more, but it is harder on us because then we have to have another camera crew, which is <laughs> camera crew junior helping us. So we really appreciate you guys supporting us as we do all these efforts to help grow the RC reach, uh, to help propagate the community of new pilots and bring people back to the hobby by giving them help figuring out weird technology that they didn't even know existed, kind of like I was about nine years ago. And now look at us now. So anyway, guys, I'm just gonna say amazing experience, really cool feature, cannot believe we haven't set it up before today, or it was actually yesterday that we did yeah. it. And uh, yeah, that's true. We never set up a buddy box before that. Mm -mm. Um, I mean, I've had buddy box cables in my basement for probably 12 Nine years because <laughs> I got some from my grandpa before he died mm. and I never used it because I didn't have the, you know, the other side of the transaction. Right. So, but at that, at that, I'm going to say wireless is huge. Yeah. It also leads to possibility of more problems because you have to make sure you're set up right. But that's true with a wired connection. The thing is you can't trip over a cable and disconnect. Right. Also, it's way more comforting to know that you've got the transmitter that you're going to be flying with on your own as a student. Yeah. Just remember, when and if you decide to get rid of the instructor from the equation, you need to be prepared to shut, uh, to check all your surfaces and make sure that you're comfortable with the way it's working. You may need to make some changes, especially if you're going from a 6 to a 10 or from an 8 to a 10 or from an 8 to a 6 or an 8 to a, you know, IS-14, you know. The, the idea is the instructor should generally be the higher level, in my opinion, okay? Um, also, if you want the best bang for your buck, get the same exact one. You're not gonna have some of the glitch problems that we had on this. All right, guys, that's all you get for tonight. We hope we answered your question. Yes, we did put another landing gear in the SUS. It was like a three second process. And if you wanna know how to do that, we have it in the SUS. Um, the slow ultra stick flapper on mod and upgrade, whatever you wanna call that, second thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see how to do it. I mean, it's very, very, very simple. Um, but also we wanna just uh, say, this is a great plane too. It's a good learning plane. There's no flaps, there's no LEDs. It doesn't have a lot of frills. And if you have a, a skilled pilot and you have a non-skilled pilot, you could just as soon go for the 1.2. It's just the 1.2 carries a little bit more consequence. This is very light, this is very airy, it's very easy to fly. The 1.2 is gonna give you thrust reverse, it's gonna give you LEDs, it's gonna give you flaps, and it's gonna give you retracts. That's a lot of complexity for a beginner, mm -hmm. okay? If you want complexity for a beginner, then you need to be prepared to control the retracts, you need to be prepared to control the flaps, you need to be prepared to control any thrust reverse that you're planning to use, okay? So you're gonna be landing, essentially, okay? Um, so that's why this is such a great utility. And honestly, for the money you're gonna spend on this, you're probably better off to just buy one of these, tear the heck out of it, as opposed to getting the 1.2 and tearing the heck out of that and fixing it. Um, but that's, again, come back to the beauty of the trainer, is you don't have to fix it because you just take over. But remember, mistakes have consequences and consequences build character and character makes a better pilot. So, you need to eventually have some mistakes here and there, but you're gonna have ample opportunity for mistakes when you don't have your trainer right there. So just let them have that another day, okay? Let them run into a tree when you're not there, okay? That's gonna happen. It happens to the best of us. I just crashed a brand new plane the other day, hit a tree, like an idiot. Broke it, brand new plane. It happens to us all the time. Not all the time, but a lot less than it used it to. It does happen. But it does happen. Yeah. So anyway, guys, so much to take in. We hope this video struck a chord because we really think that this is gonna be a huge, valuable commodity to the RC community. And I know a lot of you guys are like rolling your eyes like, geez, Brian, we've been doing that for like 20 years. I'm sure you have, but I haven't. So now we're sharing it. All right, guys, leave your comments and questions in the comments down below. Smash the like button, click the bell for notifications when you're subscribing and choose all so you know about all the content that's coming from Brian Phillips RC. And there is a lot. If you can't tolerate buying these from the links for whatever reason, whether you're overseas or you just don't like that model, that's fine. But just remember that is the best way to support us financially if you're not gonna be contributing through PayPal or Patreon. Remember if you do PayPal, friends and family means nobody pays the fee. It's really nice because you're not returning anything. So it's really nothing to lose if it's a donation anyway. So just a thought, 
but we still think the best way to support us if you're gonna give us financially anything is to buy this because then you win, we win, manufacturers that we work with win, and we propagate this whole mess of RC enthusiasm. And we know you guys wanna do that because you're gonna have questions that come up in the future. And, and there always are. So we're gonna do our best to bring them to you in long format content, not shorts. You know, we don't do shorts and stuff. We might someday work that in, but we're not gonna neglect what we do best, which is long format educational content here on Brian Phillips RC. So thanks for watching and we know you'll come back for more.